Aaron, the uh, fan base is pretty riled up at the uh, end of the season of the sweep to the Astros. In your early discussions with Cash or anyone around here, just what what's the feeling of what might need to change going into next year? Well, I, th I think I think there's always constantly change. Um, and that doesn't change win or lose. You know, if, you know, obviously we want to be the, the last team standing. That's what we're working towards. And, you know, there, it's this time of year when there's that ultimate, you know, disappointment. And, you know, it's a rough time because, you know, going back to from now forward, I mean, we've already begun um, preparations moving forward into next year and you realize all that goes into that and all the many people that are involved in um you know trying to get us to be the best we can be and then you go to spring training and you you know start out on this desire to be a champion and ultimately the ending of that is always cruel so um you know there's that it, it sucks this time of year I mean, to, to watch two other teams playing because you want to be there and you feel like you're close and you know what people have poured into this. Um, as far as change, I mean, I, I think it's just continuing to evolve and, and inevitably with that comes change, you know. Um, there's there's always going to be roster turnover. And, you know, for us, for here with the Yankees, we're always searching for – as perfect a team as we can get, as perfect a roster as you can get. There's always challenges with that, you know, whether it becomes people coming up through the farm system, trades, free agency. Um, I don't think anything changes from there. I mean, we're constantly looking to where can we get better, um, whether that's baseball operations, um, on the field, coaching, player development. I mean, we're relentless in that pursuit. And, uh, you know, had we still been standing and win the World Series, um, you know, that doesn't change. We're, we're, we're trying to be the best team we can be each and every year. And uh, it was a, you know, relatively uh, big story when uh, Hal spoke down in Tampa and made it a point to say, you know, your job is safe. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, were, were there any concerns on your end uh, about that? Were you... Wondering about what your job status and and was there any no. thoughts on your end about no? That? I mean, you know, I signed a contract last year, so you know, my focus remains the same, and that's you know to be one of the leaders of this team that uh, again is, is you know I came back to do this and, and got into this for a lot of reasons, you know, the competition to to compete at the highest level that camaraderie you feel being a part of an organization being a part of a team being in the trenches being in the dugout um the lives you have the potential to impact the relationships you're able to forge but ultimately i want to win a championship you know that's and that's there's no i don't think better place to come to try and realize that because you know um you know that is the mindset, the focus each and every year, and and I'm grateful b to be a part of that. But as far as, you know, the job security and all that, I've never worried about that, ever. Um, and the reality is last year I signed an extension, and so my focus is on putting my steps forward to what's 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 in front of me, what's next for us as, a, as an organization. Brian, to the right. Aaron, uh, with Aaron Judge, how did you leave things personally with him after Game Four? Did it feel like a goodbye or a goodbye for now? What do you What do you kind of think? Yeah, I hope not. Um, look, um, you know, we had we had we had a you know nice conversation in my office um, at the end of the night. Um, I think I think I think most of you know how I feel about him. Um, you know. How, how much appreciation I have for our relationship and how it's grown over the years. Um, so, I mean, all I'll say is that, of course, I hope he's back and a Yankee for, for forever. And, you know, I, I can't think of a better guy to, you know, that you'd want to 
be leading your team and leading your organization and and hopefully that that all works out and you know but my conversations with them now are um you know just communicating them with them through the winter and um hoping that it works out but you know obviously that's that's above me and and that's gotta you know happen over time here chris to the left Hey, Aaron, what do you view as the team's top priority this offseason to improve and, and close that gap with Houston? Well, I mean, <clears throat> look, I, I mean, that's probably, you know, I know cash is coming in next, and certainly uh, I'm always a part of those conversations and thing. And you're trying to improve. So the offseason takes you a lot of different places. I mean, there's there's – obvious things you say let's get this guy let's get this guy let's make this move but a lot of things have to line up and cooperate for that so you've got to be I think you got to be agile and you got to have the ability to because you're not going to get everything you want or have every move happen to line up perfectly so um you know you've got to you know you've got to you know have a lot of plans in place you know that if this happens then we got to pivot in this direction so um you know bottom line is we're a really good team we've been knocking on that door now for for a long time we haven't punched through i i certainly understand the frustration of that with everyone we all feel that as much as everyone like that's again that's why i came back to do this i want to hoist that trophy with these guys um and the reality is we are close and we have a team that, you know, is in that conversation, realistically in that conversation. Um, there's a lot of things that play out over the course of the year. You know, we're missing, obviously, some key people at a key time of the year. Um, but there's always going to be turnover on the roster that force you to go in a different direction. Um, as far as what it is specifically, Bottom line is we got to get a little bit better. We got beat by a better team in the American League Championship Series. They've kind of, you know, set the mark right now, and and you know we got to find a way to keep getting a little bit better. And that's always the focus going into the off season. And then the season plays out, and so many factors come in that, you know, change that equation, make it easier, make it harder. Um, but. I can tell you we're relentless in our pursuit to, to try and chase that. Dan, to the right. Have you uh, made any decisions about your coaching staff for next year? Um, no. I, I mean, that's, you know, um, obviously a number of guys will be back that are under contract. Um, a few guys are up, so we're working kind of through those situations, but I don't have any news on that front right now. And any news on uh, DJ or any of the other injured guys with surgery or anything? Uh, DJ, we're still unknown on the surgical part of it. Um, you know, that's something that's in front of DJ right now. And, and again, as these specialists kind of wheel through, what is the best course of action? Is it surgery? Is it ultimately surgery? Is it other treatments leading into that? Um, we're not quite at that point yet. Um, so I don't have an answer there for you. Laura? It seems just looking at this season that the expanded playoffs kind of led an extra layer of improbability. Does that make you reevaluate how you manage over 162 during the season? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, look, it, ultimately you're trying to put yourself in the best position, and that's, you know, being the best team you can be for us, trying to, you know, win a division and, and hopefully set yourself up. But then, you know, Again, the, the the length and the grind of the season ultimately sometimes puts your team in different spots, whether it's the start of the year, the middle of the year, the end of the year. Circumstances happen, injuries happen, um, situations come up that, you know, alter the equation a little bit. Ultimately, you're trying to be the best team you can be, especially towards the end of the year and heading into the playoffs and you try and put your best foot forward. But as far as changing how we go about the 162, I don't think so. Andy. Uh, to what extent, if at all, was Stanton playing through something with that leg or Achilles all through the second half and into the postseason? And does he, was he, was he limited and does he have to do anything to deal with that now that the season's over? Yeah, I, I think he was playing through something. I think it was, 
not significant enough, obviously, to keep him out. And obviously, I think we started to see him the final week and into the playoffs really start to look the part and look like Big G all the way to the point that he could go out and play the outfield a little bit. But I do think he was compromised a little bit in playing through things. Um, again, nothing that I felt like where he was in jeopardy or obviously not that he couldn't perform. But I think some of the struggles he went through, to his credit, in you know August, when he did come back in August and the early parts of September, middle of September, um, I think was him, in his way, like figuring out how to perform at a high level a little bit banged up. And, and I think he did that. And um, respect how he went about it respect his process through it because he knew he had to take some lumps along the way and he did down the stretch and then started to you saw him start to really write the ship towards the end and I think that was him learning how to play at a high level with it and I, I think he got to that point you still like him in the outfield a couple of days a week next year if, if... yeah that's my hope I do again I I, I maintain I, I think it's something that you know at its best helps keep him a little healthier keep him a little bit more athletic throughout the course of the year now obviously you got to be smart about that and you know I, I think the first time he got hurt it was it was a dh game where he wasn't even on the field it was underneath he was getting ready for an at bat um but i do think um him being able to play the outfield not only serves us well obviously and giving us some flexibility from time to time but i think it serves him well um Obviously, you just got to be smart and pick your spots with it. Sweeney, do you have a hand up? Aaron, whether it's during the course of the season or now, a, a lot of it's things that we seem to ask you about are basically about the outcomes and the results. Um, are you comfortable with the processes that get you there? Mm -hmm. Are there any changes that need to be made along those lines? I'm, yeah, I am comfortable with 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 uh, with our process, with my process. Um, of course, and again, this goes back to when you win ultimately, when you fall short, um, even on a smaller level, like during the season, you win a game, you lose a game, you get a result. Um, you're constantly trying to evaluate that and trying to be better at it and trying to grow at it. And I think I've done that and I think we've done that, but that never stops. Um, but I do feel really good about our process and my process. And, you know, I think, I think we're a very well run and buttoned up organization that is very prepared at, at what we do. It would seem that as many times as you've had to go through the Astros, you <clears throat> likely maybe have to try to do that again next year. When you're watching them, are there specific things that they do better than you that you say, mm -hmm. we need to be, maybe not more like them, but this is what we need to do better. That's what we need to do better because that's what they do. Well, I think every year is a little bit different. Um, you know, it, you know, looking at this year's Astros team, you know, I think it's as deep a pitching as they've had and it's as healthy and deep a pitching staff heading into the postseason. So they were even different facing them a little bit this year, you know, in other years, they've been even more, you know, more offensive, you know. Um, um, but this year, I think, and again, every year is a little bit different, and, and and we haven't been able to beat them. You know, I said we, you know, we need to slay that dragon. We haven't done it yet, and and that's that hurts, and and it's also a motivating factor to try and continue to get better and work. But I look at the Astros team this year, and you look at whether it's, you know, their four starters that they're rolling out there and then the depth and health of their bullpen right now, that was, you know, that that's where they're, at, I feel like, at their best right now. And then having some, obviously, great positional players sprinkled in there. Um, but, you know, this probably Astros version a little bit different than some of the teams they've had in the past. Uh, where am I? Brendan. Donaldson's track record speaks for itself, but at some point, mid-30s, offensive production tends to slow. Yeah. Did age catch up to him this year? Um, I don't know. I, you know, I've, 
look, age always is a factor. You know, I think you look at JD and look at just. I was blown away at how good he played third. And, you know, you could make a case that, you know, the age didn't show up there. You know, I knew we were getting a good defensive third baseman. I didn't know we were getting that good a one. Um, and, again, I think his offensive season, again, coming out of the lockout, coming over to a new team right at the start of spring training, you didn't really have the, that time to build. And then um, I just felt like he never got untracked and got on that really extended hot streak where he built momentum and now we're rolling. Again, I felt like all year it was like, man, he, he'd get it going there for a couple of days and then maybe take a step back. And I think part of that was just one of those years where it was hard for him to get, get that consistency all the time. Um, you know, tough to say exactly if that's, you know, age-related or just one of those seasons where you can have a little bit of a down year by your standard. And the game's hard and the game's hard on to navigate on the fly and get on those really good runs. Um, I still think he has a lot in there. Uh, that's kind of where I was going with this. He's a, as a, focused uh, on hitting and on offense as anybody. Uh, are your guys numbers uh, behind, behind the scenes showing you a player in decline? Right. Um, no, I think he was better than what he showed this year. And we, we feel that way. Um, Look, he, he's. It's not 2015. I think that's the year he won the MVP. You know, obviously there's some age there, but I would say physically, I still feel like um, he has a lot in there on the offensive side to still be really productive. John to the right. So much of a strength early in the season, obviously was health, but also just like a ability to plug and play guys kind of in a lot of different places. When you get to October, how difficult do you think it is for the players, but also for you, not to have easy answers to something like the question of who's your shortstop um, or what right. does your lineup look like? Does that create an extra challenge? Yeah, it's not ideal. I mean, that's, you know, again, I think you you, you referenced the first half, and, and that was. We had that, by and large, really good health, the consistency, and, you know, we're, you know, we were, you know, unfortunately having to try some things out on the fly a little bit in, in the postseason, and that's not always ideal. But, you know, it, it's also necessary at times. I think part of it and some of the things helped us get through a series in the postseason. Um, but, you know, obviously you want to just roll in with what got you there and why you're there, and, and now let's go find out against the other best. Chris and then Matthew. You, you mentioned on a few occasions throughout the season that internal metrics painted Isaiah as one of the best defensive shortstops in the league. Yeah. As an organization, what exactly goes into measuring the quality of an infield defender? I mean, range, turning plays and outs, you know, um, tra uh, transfers, uh, all, I mean, all of it. We're evaluating every every play that's made, not made, whether it's an error, whether it's a did he get to a ball, didn't he get to the ball, how does that match up? Um, and and on the balance of the season, it was very good. You know, I know there are some frustrations with an, the the error that he would have on occasion, and and where I felt like you know I had to <clears throat> do something within the lineup because I felt like it was something that you know, came into play a little bit um, in, in one of the series. Um, but on the whole, you know, I, I feel like he was by and large excellent uh, defensively <clears throat> and in the top part of the league of sh shortstops. And so what do you weigh? You're weighing everything. You know, it ultimately comes down to – I mean, trying to make plays – and how many plays does he make compared to his peers on balls that we're measuring, range, transfers? Oh, I mean, you, uh, I, I don't know how to answer it without, you know, pulling you aside and showing you all that goes into it. But essentially, it's, you know, a fairly sophisticated look at, 
you know, how many plays is he making compared to other shortstops? Matthew. Aaron, when you look at the postseason every year, I don't think luck is the right word, but there's always an element of some team just getting hot at the right time. And I think if you look at this year's Phillies, most people would argue that you guys were a better team than them this year. So I guess my question is, how do you ensure or try to create the feeling of we're, you know, playing our best ball right now? Like, you know, how do you become that sort of, like, good vibes team in October, for lack of a better term? Win. <laughs> um, look, I mean, there is part of that that's, you know, it, it is. It's a tournament of of the league's best teams. Um, so you try and, you try and, again, construct a roster going into a season and on the fly during a season. You obviously have the trade deadline. No longer do you have the waiver deadline, which, you know, that pencils down at July 31st that's your team moving forward and you can't really, you know, especially as things pop up, injury situation. So it's hard to get it exactly right because there's always the unknown that can come up, especially in those final, you know, two plus months of the year. Um, but you're trying to just build yourself as best you can, the best team, try and coach them up and prepare as best you can to be in a best situation to put the odds more in your favor. And that's, you know, that's the best I can say it to you is we're trying to be as our absolute best going into the season, into a postseason. Sometimes uh, you're in a better situation come October than others, but you always have a chance once you get in. Take uh, one or two more. Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Aaron, how do you view shortstop? And and from what you saw from Peraza in the month that he was up, could he is he ready to be your uh, starting you know by opening day next year? Um, well, I think Oswald had a another strong season uh, in Triple A, essentially having a full year there. Um, you know, and and earned and put himself in a position to to get a September call up, essentially. Um, I was really impressed with what I saw from him, just makeup wise, preparation wise, what he was able to handle, being thrown into some different situations that for anyone, let alone a rookie, wouldn't have always been easy. And I always felt like he was up to it and, and handled it. So he certainly put himself in a really good position heading into the winter, at coming off another strong season. Um, He's very young, um, but um, I would say I, I, obviously we were very aware of him going into this year um, as a as a top prospect and being on the roster for the first time. Um, I think he's he only helped himself moving forward now. I think he, he had himself a strong year and put himself uh, in a good situation heading into the off season and and will certainly be in that competition mix heading into uh, spring training, but certainly excited about the season he's had. And, and I just came away really impressed with, um, you know, being around him now a little bit and seeing him go about things and seeing how he handled. And I feel like hopefully really benefited from being up here and in this environment, not only for September, but, but on into the playoffs as well. We'll take Nate and Sweeney, and we'll get Brian Cashman. Aaron, uh, Jose Trevino was named a, a gold glover this week. Uh, did he exceed your expectations this season? And uh, what do you think were some of the underlying reasons that allowed him to unlock his potential here in New York? Uh, I would say yes, he's surprised. I, I think at worst we knew we were getting a, a, a really good defensive catcher. Um, and... And obviously, you know, we traded Gary at the start of spring training and brought in Ben, but then he was hurt. We knew we had to fortify the catching position. So to be able to get him at the end of spring training, um, you know, we knew we were at least getting a quality, uh, you know, backup catcher or somebody that, you know, we felt good about. But, yeah, he blew away expectations. Um, first of all, just, just the offensive side of things, um, you know, becoming an all-star, uh, 
the amount of big hits he got for us. You know, I think he too was banged up a little bit down the stretch, probably hurt his offense a little bit. So it fell off a little bit there at the end, but you know, he, he, he blew us away offensively just with the impact he had on our team. Um, but then you go to the defensive side and yes, we knew we were getting a good defensive catcher. We didn't, I don't think knew we were getting this impactful of a person and, He's obviously great at the position. He's he's so at home at the position. He takes charge at the position. He leads from the position. He's really prepared. He's a rat. You know, he loves the game and loves to prepare and loves to study and loves to find where we can have an edge. And um, and then he was just, you know, beloved in the room and, you know, you know, in, in a way became very much one of the leaders in the room. And uh, we we're really, really lucky to um, have him come here and, and be an integral part of our team. One more, Sweeney. Um, if I could follow up on Connor Falefa and Peraza. Mm -hmm. um, in the middle of summer, like July, August, right around the trade deadline, like he was, Connor Falefa was struggling defensively. He even went to you guys and asked for extra help in the field. Like, he was quoted as saying, this is the worst defense I've ever played. Um, I would quibble with that, though. I, I would quibble with he that was, was, his word he was really struggling. Actions. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. He's accountable. He's tough. He expects a lot of himself. That's who he is. So that's part of him saying that. Is this Because he has his bar is up here of this is who I should be defensively. The reality is... He, he was having a really good defensive year. He had some struggles along the way or a bad error that, you know, seemingly the next play would highlight the error because we, you know, gave up a run or whatever. But he always bounced back from that. And, and uh, but that's who he is in, in, in being really accountable and like. So maybe sorry, that's the answer on. to this part. Um, yep. Peraza was never viewed or as in, throughout the organization. You know, asking the questions, he was never viewed as ready to take his place at that point. Yeah. Even when he got called up in September, played sparingly. But mm -hmm. you, kind of, as you alluded to, you got forced into a situation in October, and and you all, you've been very impressed with Peraza. Is there something he wasn't doing in July and August that all of a sudden he got better at? No, I I just think you were still talking about a very young player that, yeah, and had a very strong season in in Triple A. But, you know, it wasn't a light the world on fire. And, and I think player development, there were still things that he was getting better at and checking boxes at. And, you know, I think he's 21 years old. Like he's – and trust me, like we love his future and love what he's going to be. And as, as I said, like getting to be around him and see him, I came away even more impressed. But he was still getting to that point. Um, as the season was unfolding in his first full trip. things or was it a no. consistency? No, I think it was, yeah, I think it was just continuing to get a little bit better in every av aspect of the game, you know. Um, he's going to be a really good player. Like, that's what I came out of this season. But I also think his development this year was really important to continue to develop, and I think he continued to improve at the AAA level as the season unfolded as well.